there's so much I could say about what God has done in my life. My whole life is a testimony. Amen. My each one of my family members are testimonies. I got two other boys that aren't here that are full of energy from traveling and being way off schedule. And my wife is a testimony. Uh, you guys all know Sister Beth, and Brother Justin, and that's my sister. That's my brother-in-law. Uh, and I, we, I grew up in a minister's home. And you know what they say about ministers, kids? Uh, except for Beth. <laughs> she, is, she is far and few between. But I, I, went, I went quite off the, the deep end, you could say. And uh, by, by the time I was 18 years old, I was an alcoholic. I was on drugs. Um, by the time I was 21 years old, I had four felonies, tons of misdemeanors. I mean, you can imagine the life that comes from those kind of people that get in that kind of trouble. My life was uh, completely out of control. I mean, I, I would, didn't know what I was doing when I was doing it a lot of the time. And uh, I ended up standing before a judge looking at nine years, and my attorney told me they didn't want to give me anything other than less than seven years because I was a re repeat offender. And God just moved in that situation. Praise God. Uh, Praise God. And in that situation, I, only, I ended up with 18 months uh, sentenced to DOC, and then six months of house arrest, and we got him to let me go to Teen Challenge. And I can tell you Teen Challenge was not easy, but I can tell you what I learned from Teen Challenge. I learned how to get into the Word of God, Praise God. And I learned how to develop a prayer life. And so many times we, we go to church, we know how to go to church, we know how to sit through a sermon, but so many times we don't apply what we hear to our everyday life. Amen. And that's kind of what Teen Challenge taught me. It's an everyday process. Even growing up in a minister's home, I didn't know that I was supposed to pray every single day. Yes, I knew I needed to pray at the dinner table. Yes, I knew my parents prayed, but that wasn't an aspect of my life. That wasn't part of who I was. And at, if I and I, I ended up going through Teen Challenge and I ended up working in the ministry for a period of time. Praise God. And God was just moving mightily in my life. And you know, when, when you're doing something for God, the enemy's always going to be there to throw something at you. Sure. So if something's being thrown at you, you're doing something right. right. Let me tell you that. Praise and I, I kind of fell off again. Well, I did fall off again. And I, got, I went off the deep end, and I left the ministry. And I, and this little girl right here, she was a result of my sin. But God had his hand on her. Praise God. Did. Uh, Praise God. She was born at 26 weeks, 2 pounds, 3 ounces. Uh, her mom, mom was lucky to be alive. She uh, had high blood pressure and nobody knew it. And thank God she knew something was wrong and just went to the ER. And she went into seizures right there at the hospital. And they took her by air flight. And they did an emergency C-section. Uh, I don't know all the operations. My wife knows that. But she had heart surgeries and probably 20-some surgeries at least before she was three months old. And you wouldn't know that today as she is the top of her class. Praise God. Praise I mean, God. The only bad things the teachers can say is she can't sit still and uh, she likes to talk. <laughs> so, you never know, people who like to talk might be a preacher. <laughs> so, uh, God had his hand on her. And even, even through that, I wasn't walking with the Lord. 
But you, you know one thing I didn't know? I knew how to get a hold of people that knew how to pray. Praise God. And despite me being where I was, God still used prayer warriors to intervene on her life. Praise God. And to intervene God. on my wife's life. And I ended up getting back into alcohol and the addiction took back over after she was born. And my marriage was on the rocks. I mean, it really was on the rocks. And my, my wife said, well, something's got to change. And I, I told her, I said, there's only going to be one thing that can change what it is. And it's going to be us getting in church and us getting, getting a hold of God and being involved and just getting in a relationship with God. So that's what we did. And she comes out of a home that none of her family serves God at all. So when you guys pray, you can pray about that. Because I'm there with her and with her family. So we are the light to all of them around us. And, uh, you know, November, this November will actually be four years where the last time I drank. And uh, we started going to church and getting our life right. And God has done so much in those four years. Praise the Lord. Uh, after we had her, the doctors told us uh, there was 99% chance that we'd never have another baby. Either my wife would die or the baby would never make it. We've got two more boys at home. Praise God. And they are both healthy as can be. And uh, God's, I mean, those are both miracle babies, too. You, I could tell you stories, but I won't. Uh, you know, in four years, God has just opened the doors wide in my life. I, I'm an ordained minister. I, I kind of walked right into the into that. I'm currently a deacon at the church we go to. Praise God. I, the, the, I'm a chaplain at the hospital. Praise God. I didn't have any uh, special training for that. I kind of, God just opened the door. Praise the Lord. I mean, and, and that's what God wants to do in each one of our lives. If if we're looking for those doors. And we're willing to walk through those doors. Because, you know, so many times in my own life, I have a, an idea or something I think, this is what God wants to do in my life. When God's saying, no, this is what I want to do in your life. Right. But will you do it? And that is my life. And there's so much more God wants to do in my life. And it's all because of prayer. Praise the Lord. It is all because of prayer. I could not have done it by myself. My mom spent hours every night that I was out. She didn't know where I was, calling out my name to God. Praise God. You know, uh, she, she cried. I remember one time she said, well, I'm praying that God, uh, God uh, put you in the ministry of Teen Challenge and you work in Teen Challenge. Well, I ended up working in Team Challenge. And then you know what I did? I left Team Challenge on bad terms. And you know what God did? He flung the door back open. I served on the board of directors for Team Challenge of uh, four states in the ocean, Missouri. I served on the Team Challenge for Primrose Hill. It's women and children's board of directors for them. And I, I truly believe there's more even in that ministry that God has for me, not because of my prayers, but because of the prayers that went before me. Praise God. So it, it may look like your prayers aren't being answered, but just remember, your prayer can change the atmosphere that you are in and the atmosphere around you. There, there might be people in here that's crying out for loved ones that looked hopeless. I mean, I know ministers that I'm in contact with now that they can't believe because they seen who I was they can't believe all that God, God's done in my life and all that God is doing in my life. And uh, it's not because of me. Believe me, it's not because of me because I, I've fallen short. I fall short almost every day. 
We all fall short. But God's sitting there with his hand out, ready to pull us right back into, into his arms because he loves us that much. Amen. And he not only loves us that are his children, he loves the ones that haven't yet called his name. Right. You know, God, God made a promise. I got a brother that's an alcoholic. And You know, when I was in Team Challenge, we were, we were, we were in, on a ministry, and somebody came up to me, and prayed over me, and they began to speak about what God was going to bring him out of, and that God was going to save his soul. And you know what I'm doing? I'm standing on that promise. Praise God. Amen. God doesn't speak things like that to lie because God is not a liar. Right. But you know what I can do? I can believe the enemy, but I refuse to believe the enemy. Amen. I'm standing on the word of God. Amen. Even though everything around his life looks like there is no hope. But you know what? It's those prayers that went before. Those prayers that my mother cried out. Those prayers that I cried out when I was in Teen Challenge and spent hours crying out for his soul. You know what God was doing? He was answering my prayer at that moment. Praise God. He's still answering my prayer. Yes. It hasn't been answered yet, but he's already told me it's going to be answered. Praise God. There's, there's people in your life that you're crying out for, for healing, that God wants to move. And God says, don't give up. Right. Don't give up. Right. Do not doubt. Sometimes we give up right at that, we're right at the breaking point of crossing that line. So many times. You know, uh, I got one scripture I'll share. Yeah, you're good. You're doing good. Uh, uh, let's see. Well, it's 1 Corinthians 2.9. I don't want to misquote it. Everybody's heard this verse. But it is written, Eye is not seen, nor ear heard, nor hath entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love Him. Amen. You know, if we love God, there's God will open the windows of heaven. I mean, He truly will. Mm -hmm. It'll be in a way that we might not expect it or we don't even know it's available. But God has that kind of love to give you things that you haven't even seen. To move in your family in ways that you don't even know to be moved. Amen. I mean, He's already done it in my family. He could do nothing else in my family and He's already blown my mind. Praise he God. really has. I mean, he's given me three kids that are healthy. He's kept my wife alive, a wife twice through pregnancies. The last pregnancy, her blood pressure was so high the nurses were scared. She didn't have a clue. But you know what? God had his hand on her. Praise God. God has brought, brought her so far from where she is. You know, so many times we get caught up on what we don't see the growth that we want in people's lives. But sometimes we don't know what they came out of. That's true. That's true. Amen. And let's face it, we're living in a dark world. We are living in a dark world. And as uh, Pastor Seville already said uh, about the leadership, now is our time. Now is the church's time. Amen. If ever there was a time for America to rise up in this dark hour, now is the time. Amen. You know, let me encourage you. Don't give up. Don't give up on your prayers. Do not give up because God hasn't given up. Amen. God didn't give up on me. Even when I turned my back and walked away after He already brought me out. Thank you, Jesus. And He's still there extending His hand. And He's still there opening doors. And you know,
know what, I, I know there's, there's more for my life because of where God has brought me out of. Because of the battles that, the, the, the things that are coming against me, not because of who I am, but because of how I want God to move in my life. Amen. Because it's God's. My life is God's. Amen. Praise God. Not, man, God is good. I mean, let me just tell you that. God is Amen. good. I'm going to turn service over. If I can say anything else, you just press on and you keep praying and you keep believing and you keep standing on the Word of God. And any time the enemy comes at you with something, I mean, we got so much internet, all you got to do is type in God's promises. Amen. God's promises for my children. God's promises for deliverance. Amen. Because the Word of God is full of it. You don't even have to spend hours in it digging. You can pull it up, somebody else already dug it, dug it out for you. Praise God. And you can pray those scriptures. The Word of God is a book full of prayers. Some, you know what? We, we don't become prayer warriors overnight. But if you put the Word of God in front of you and begin to pray the Word, the Word is alive. The Word is living. Yes. When we pray, our prayers are alive. Amen. Oh, that's good. That's good. So, let me encourage you. Keep going. Keep going for the kingdom. Keep going for your families. Amen. Keep going for your neighborhood. Keep going for the people you work with. Be that light in this dark world. Amen. Amen. Praise God.